although both US 21 CFR Part 820 and ISO 13485 2016 are complementary, there are some differences between the two. But these differences are so minor that the FDA is considering replacing 21 CFR Part 820 with ISO 13485 2016. In summary, the differences are the requirements of ISO 13485 for customer satisfaction and continuous improvement go beyond the requirements of 21 CFR Part 820. ISO 13485 does not recognize the grouping of documents into the design history file, the device master record, and the device history record. There are other differences, such as the handling of reporting of complaints. However, in February 2022, the FDA started the process of harmonizing and modernizing of the quality system regulation for medical devices with the specifications of ISO 13485-2016. The FDA published a document named Medical Devices, Quality System Regulation Amendments for consultation. This document, if finalized, will harmonize key areas of the quality management system and will closely align the United States with many other regulatory authorities around the world, such as ISO 13485-2016 and EU regulations. So what happens if there are two different standards of compliance? Do medical devices companies need to be audited by different requirements? Let's take a look and see. The Medical Device Single Audit Program, or MDSAP, is a global standardized approach by the International Medical Device Regulators Forum, or IMDRF. This approach to auditing and monitoring the manufacturing of medical devices replaces the different types of audits and inspections made by authorities. When an organization participates in the audit program, they are audited against a harmonized quality management system that meets both ISO 13485 and 21 CFR Part 820. For the time being, the FDA continues to accept MDSAP audit reports as a substitute for routine agency inspections. Let's continue for the other regulations for the European Union. The regulation EU 2017-745 is the European regulation for medical devices that is mandatory for any medical device manufacturer that wants to sell their products in the European marketplace after May 26, 2021. It replaced the Medical Device Directive MDD, and the Active Implantable Medical Device Directive AIMD. The regulation EU 2017-746 is the European regulation for in vitro diagnostic medical devices that replaced the Active Implantable Medical Device Directive, IVDD. Applying risk management principles adds several benefits for a medical device organization. The benefits can be business related, such as cost efficiency and avoidance of CAPAS and recalls. There are also benefits related to ethics. A benefit is the positive impact or desirable outcome of the use of a medical device on the health of an individual. It can also have a positive impact on patient management or public health. For example, a positive impact on a patient's quality of life or a positive impact on clinical outcomes from the use of diagnostic devices. Risk management is a process that can help you gain knowledge to identify the risks of a medical device. This knowledge can be used to detect design flaws that have a safety impact in the development phase. The sooner the design flaw is corrected in the design phase, the less expensive it is to fix it. Product recalls are necessary when a medical device with safety violations is sold in a market. Recalls are detrimental to the manufacturer's reputation and often carry excessive costs, legal fees, lawsuits, and fines. Applying good risk management practices helps the manufacturer foresee potential problems. The identification of potential problems in the medical device can reduce the probability of harming patients and avoid recalls. 
The most important benefit is the trust from patients that use the medical device. Patients expect that their medical devices are safe. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the organization to apply good risk management to deliver the safest possible devices to them.